Hey, I'm Chris, and this is MMA for you. I'm going to be doing my predictions for UFC on Fox 20, Home vs. Shevchenko, which happens on July 23rd. But before I get into that, I'd like to plug my own author's website at www.chrismoldon.com. I am an author specializing in the fantasy genre, and you can buy a couple of my works, uh, starting with my first novel, an action-adventure fantasy called The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom for $4.99 on PDF at www.chrismodon.com or um, if you have an e-reader you can buy it on amazon.com for $4.99 you can also buy some of my short stories and uh, collections for just $1.99 both on chrismodon.com or on amazon.com starting with the land of the wooden statues which is an action horror short story which I am trying to make into a full-fledged novel um, my horror collection which is a collection of three of my gothic horror short stories and the fancy fable collection which is a collection of four of my fantasy fables okay on to this card um, for Fox card it's good it's really top-heavy like the fighters I want to see are mainly just on the top of the card. I think Holm versus Chipchenko is a good fight. Barboza versus Melendez is a really good fight. I want to see Francis Ngannou. Um, Harry versus Curran I think is going to be a good fight. Um, that should be, at the very least, it should be an interesting fight. I, on the streets, I can't see a lot, because there's a lot of fighters here that are not put potent finishers so I can actually see a lot of decisions happening in this card there's some really good prospects Kamaru Usman is pretty much um, well there's a big truck coming along the way uh, Kamaru Usman he's pretty much one of the best prospects in the MMA and especially one of the best prospects in the welterweight division they have a fun fight between Muntazri and Alex Cowboy um, a couple lower tier fights here and there. You got some new heavyweights and Dmitry Smolyakov. Um, you know, he's 33, but and at heavyweight, that can be a prospect. And he's fighting Luis Enrique, who's only 22 years old. So it's an okay card. It's just kind of top heavy. But let's get started. <coughs> okay, and the main event Holly, the preacher's daughter, home, fights. Uh, Valentina Bullet Shevchenko. Uh, Shevchenko, 12 and 2 record, 4 wins by Kertiko, 5 wins by Sub. 28 years old, she's 5'5, five, five, training out of Tiger Muay Thai. She's strong in the clinch. <coughs> Excuse me. Really strong with her clinch striking and her takedowns. Just her overall offensive game is really good off of the clinch. Her overall stand up's good, too. Uh, her grappling actually isn't too bad. You know, she has. Like a pretty good grappling game, pretty good ground and pound game. I mean, you can see it in the Amanda Nunez fight, uh, where in like the third round she was able to get her in the ground, get off on her back, and just ground and pound her. Um, Holly Holm, 10 and 1 record, 7 wins by KO Tico, 3 wins by decision. 34 years old, she's 5'8, training out of Jackson Winklejohn. She's a former UFC women's bantamweight champion and a strong kickboxer. Uses a lot of movement. Um, she has a really good, she actually has like, I'd say four or five strikes, right? Her side kicks are one of her best strikes, and her head kick is really good. She does have a normal body kick, but then she has a jab and a cross. And that <coughs> is pretty much all her moves. I think, honestly, if you watch a lot of her fights, I'm, I'm not saying that's... I'm not, I'm being like, just like semi-serious, but it's just like, you know, she used elbows against like Rousey and whatnot. It's not like she can't like kick or something like that. Um, it's just that her primary weapons are, you know, she doesn't have, she only uses like four or five strikes on a primary basis, um, and moves a lot. Um, her takedown defense is actually pretty solid. A few times you saw her on her back, especially against Misha Tate, um, she's not very good there, and you can tell she's very not comfortable there. Um, 
it seems like her sole purpose when she's on her back is to get back to her feet when she's taken down, which is fine. Um, you can see, though, that she does expose her back a lot. Even in the Ronda Rousey fight, now that I think about it, uh, she does expose her back quite a bit to get back to her feet. Her cardio, though, is good. She can go five rounds and still look the same as she did in the first round as she does in the fifth round. Um, fun fight. Here's my thing, though. Stylistically, I feel that if Sachenko wants to get any meaningful offense in this fight, she has to be in close. Whereas with Holly Holm, she pretty much most fighters play her game. Um, and she fights in a way that makes it where her opponent kind of has to play her game. Um, eventually, like, what happens is, like, her opponents just start rushing in on her. And, um, sometimes we're able to get, get some offense going and sometimes don't. Um, I can see Holm just playing this outside game. Sidekicks, straight punches, move, move, move. Um, just peppering away. Um, Shevchenko trying to chase her, you know? trying to get really inside because like I said that's where her best offense is it's not from the inside and but yeah I just can't see Chichenko really getting inside so Holly Holm I think peppers peppers her from the outside and wins by decision next right after that Edson Barboza fights Gilbert Melendez I think this fight's actually really well matched here one of uh, one of a couple that's uh, pretty tough for me to call uh, Gilbert Melendez, 22-5 and five record, 11 wins by K.R. Tico, 1 win by Sub, 34 years old, he's 5'9", on a two-fight losing streak, trains out the scrap pack, he is a, and, and Caesar Gracie. Um, he is a former Strikeforce lightweight champion and lost fought in June of 2015. That was against current champ Eddie Alvarez, and um, then he got caught for something and has been out for pretty much over a year. Um, with Melendez, he's a strong wrestler, both offensively and defensively. Uh, he can shoot his own offensive takedowns quite well. Um, but I like his takedown defense and his ability to scramble uh, pretty well, too. Um, he has really good ground and pound. When he fought like Kavajiri, for example, uh, he finished him off with those elbows, and that was it. Um, when he fought like Thompson, he can show that he, he showed to be a really strong scrambler. His takedown defense is really good. Uh, standing, he's part primarily a boxer, but he also is pretty. He pushes forward a lot. He's very aggressive. Like he doesn't really take a step back. He just keeps moving forward. Throws combinations. Well, actually, works up a jab pretty well. Um, and he's actually shown to have a pretty good chin, too. It's in Barbosa, 17-4 and four record, 10 wins by Karatika, 1 win by Sub. This is 2 losses by Sub, 30 years old, he's 5'11", trains out of Ricardo Almeida's gym. Um, that's like Frankie Edgar's gym with like Victor, is it Victor Henry? <laughs> I always forget the name of this guy, this coach, I think it's Victor Henry. Um, Eddie, new champ, Eddie Alvarez trains out of, with Edson Barbosa. Edson Barbosa actually said that he's not going to fight Eddie Alvarez. Like, he just will not fight the guy. Um, that they're too much of friends for him to uh, want to fight him. Um, he's trading wins and losses right now. He's actually coming off a big win over Anthony Pettis. Um, he has a strong kickbox, a really strong kicks. He has finished opponents with leg kicks, body kicks, and head kicks. Um really strong kicker. His boxing, though, is improving, too. And he really saw that against Anthony Pettis. Uh, he has a particularly strong left hook that he was using to good effect and is pretty heavy-handed. His takedown defense is real strong, too. Um, and it's kind of funny. I say chins don't get better, but I think Edson Barboza I don't know if he has the greatest chin per se, but his defense has gotten a lot better where he's not getting hit so clean. Um, and that really showed 
in that uh, Pettis fight, and actually just in some of his recent fights, you know, um, when he fought Bobby Green, you know, he's not getting hit hard, um, Michael Johnson was never able to really wobble him, but he was able to beat him, not really wobble him, you know, I think Tony Ferguson's one of the only guys that managed, managed to really hurt him, um, but yeah, so, this should be really interesting, because, uh, that was the weakness of Ed Edson Barboza is if you box him and pressure him, you win against him. Because when he gets dropped, it's usually by punches. You know, he's not the greatest at boxing range. Um, and, you know, when he, when he pressure him, he can't rely on his kicks like he usually does. So... That makes this fight really interesting because Gilbert Melendez definitely has a style of fighting that is a pressure fighter that boxes. I do feel that Barboza has been improving his boxing enough where he should be able to handle himself. Um, I can imagine that Melendez is going to move forward enough that it's going to nullify Barboza's kicks, just making him unable to really utilize them. But that's not to say that he won't be able to get any kicks in there. I think Barboza will be able to get some of his kicks in there. And I think Melendez actually has shown a susceptibility to getting kicked. I gotta say, like, I, I remember when he fought Benson Henderson. Um, he just kind of ate leg kicks all day. I think Diego, uh, Diego Sanchez was actually body kicking him to some effect. So, I think, despite everything, I think that... Barbosa is going to be able to kick him, and quite a bit, too. Um, yeah, so, yeah, this one's close, I got to say. Uh, but I, I got to favor Edson Barbosa here. Like I said, his, his hands are improving enough. I think he can do well uh, in the boxing range. He can get If he can get really get his kicks going, I think that he, you know, he can definitely beat Melendez with those. I think Melendez does, does have that style of pushing forward, uh, pressuring Barboza that has shown to be something of a weakness of his so yeah I'm not I'm not super confident in this fight and, and we're at a point now at lightweight where it just seems like every top 10 fighter can beat any other top 10 fighter heck man was it Venata will almost beat Tony Ferguson the other day you know uh, this is a short take division it is like really hard for me to be truly confident in any pick these days considering too that like I think weaknesses for both are what recognizable um but I, I'll go with Edson Barboza to win this one I think Melendez is pretty tough he has a good chin resilient enough not to get knocked out and that's pretty much Barboza's main way obviously he's not a submission threat um per se. So, I'll go Edson Barboza to win by decision. Uh, next fight is that. Bojan Mihaljevic fights Francis Ngannou. Uh, Mihaljevic, uh, 10 and 3 record, 4 wins by KRT, 2 wins by Sub, 36 years old, he's 5'11", <coughs> on a 10 fight win streak. It's his first fight in the UFC. He's actually pretty small for the weight class. Um, I'd say the best part of his game is his ground and pound. He does have some deep Decent offensive takedown ability from the clinch. His stand-up though is pretty average. He's a good kicker, but overall just pretty average. Francis Ngannou, seven and one record, four wins by KO TKO, three wins by sub. Twenty-nine years old. He's six-four, so he's gonna kind of tower over um, Halovic Vic here. Um, and he's on a six-fight win streak, training out of MMA fa factory. And Ganu is a finisher. He is. Like, I always say this about Francis Ngani, and I think it's true. The guy is pretty much an NFL lineman fighting in the UFC. <laughs> Huge. But he moves. Like, he doesn't... He's not slow and plodding. And he's just hyper-athletic. I mean, so his stand-up's good. He has a really good cross. And, like, he, he has a really good reach, too. I remember he was throwing his cross in the Curtis Blades fight. And, like, I don't think Blade saw it coming. It seemed like it seemed like it was far away. But it was, in reality, very... Like, 
within Ngannou's range, and he's super heavy-handed, too. His takedown defense is improving. Like, part of it is athleticism, part of it is actually technique, too. I remember Curtis Blades took down Ngannou, that side mount, right? Ngannou quickly gets an underhook, shrimps, gets back to his feet, like, faces him, you know, like, he, he gets out the right way, faces him, uh, and he's also just super strong, too. Gets up, and, and, and properly gets out of side mount using the underhook. Uh, the other thing is, I remember Blaze was trying to go for a takedown, and just how quickly Ngannou was able to get underhooks. Um, with this fight, I can't help but find this to be something of a showcase fight for Francis Ngannou. Um, I'm sure the UFC is very high on him. He has future title, he has future champion written all over him. Um, not just title contender, but champion. He's still 29. That's young for heavyweight. Only 8 fights and it looks really good. Um, and the guy's just a freaking monster of a man too. That guy is so strong. MMA Factory um, out of France. Um, it's actually uh, bringing out some pretty good fighters too. They have um, Lapalus. He fights at uh, Bantamweight. He's, he's solid. Um, so it's actually a pretty solid camp now too. And like, yeah, I gotta go Francis and Ghani to win this by KO or TKO. Um, I, you know, I, I understand that um, upsets are happening. It's, a lot this time of the year. And it's heavyweight, anything can happen. Everyone has fight changing power. But, um, nonetheless, I, I gotta go Francis and Gowney uh, for the win there. Next fight after that, Kylan Curran fights Felice, Lil Bulldog Herrig. Herrig, 10 and 6 record, 1 win by TKO, 3 wins by sub, 31 years old. She's 5'4, training out of Team Curran. Uh, not to be mistaken for like Kylan Curran. <laughs> this is um, Jeff Curran's camp. Uh, she's training losses and wins right now. She she most recently lost to Paige Van Zandt. And that was back in April 2015. Uh, Herrig's kind of a good everywhere but not great at any one aspect of MMA. She, she actually has a Muay Thai background. Um, her stand-up's actually pretty solid. You know, technical enough. And her overall grappling's good too. She actually wins a good amount of her fights these days with her grappling. Her wrestling's not too bad. She has some submission ability. She has some scrambling ability too. Um, obviously, she was out hustled by uh, Paige Van Zant. Kylan Curran, 4 and 2 record, 1 win by sub, 3 wins by decision. 25 years old, she's 5'3. Um, the thing with Kylan Curran that stands out is that she is. She's a good athlete for the division, and definitely has a lot of promise and potential, but she is so raw. She's a good wrestler, and her stand-up is improving. I actually really watched her fight against Emily Peter Kagans. Um, she was getting controlled quite a bit in the clinch. Um, standing, she'd do pretty well. She kind of ended up out-athleting her. But she still loses positions on the ground. She was beating up Alex Chambers in the fight before that. And then she goes for a takedown and get like gets arm barred, you know? Um, so she still makes a good amount of noticeable mistakes. Like I said, she's just really raw. She hasn't just put it all together yet. And nothing, it, uh, even though everything's improving, it's still not clean and it's not always technical. Like, she took down Kylan Cur or, uh, Emily Peters Kagan with a nice head and arm throw, got side mount, and she so quickly tried to mount her opponent that gave Kagan space, and pretty much she um, passed into Peter Kagan's butterfly guard, you know, and couldn't hold top position, you know. Um, this one's hard for me to call because I think Kylan Curran is the fighter that's going to improve more. I also think she's the better athlete of the two, but I think she makes a lot more mistakes. Whereas Felice Herrig isn't great in any one aspect of MMA, but she's good everywhere. She's technical everywhere. Um, so yeah, I gotta go with Felice Herrig to win that one. 
probably be by decision. They're both not particularly potent finishers. So Fleece Herrick by decision. Okay, on the prelims, which is also on Fox, apparently. Uh, Frankie Signs fights Eddie Wineland. Eddie Wineland, 21 and 11 record with one draw. 11 wins by KO Tico, 5 wins by Sub. He also has 3 losses by KO Tico and 4 losses by Sub. 32 years old, he's 5'7 on a 2 fight losing streak. Most recently losing to Brian Caraway. And that was back in July of 2015, so he. He is actually on a one-year layoff. Uh, trains on the Dunan Valley Tudo with likes of Darren Elkins. Um, at his best, uh, Wineland is a good boxer that throws combinations pretty well. Relatively heavy-handed, too. And he has a pretty strong takedown defense. And he has a good chin, but I, I kind of wonder if it's deteriorating. He's also had jaw problems, too. Frankie Signs, 11 and 3 record, 3 wins by KO Tico, 2 wins by Sub, 35 years old, he's 5'6. Um, the main of his game, name of his game is his aggression. He's always pushing forward, not necessarily to box or to strike, but he's pushing forward to really relentlessly get that takedown. That's his thing. I think his stand up's just pretty average. This is a weird stylistic matchup because here's the thing with Eddie Wineland that I've noticed is that when the threat of the takedown is there he almost does not strike like you can see that like and he was getting outboxed by Brian Caraway like out jabbed by Caraway and I kind of wonder if that's because of the threat of its takedown even when he fought like Joseph Benavides you know Wineland did like it was the same thing it's like he's trying to defend the takedowns and doesn't throw much and then Benavides is like out striking him and that's the thing with Frankie Signs. At the very least, Frankie Signs, good takedowns. He's a good wrestler in his own right. Um, but he just commits to offense more. That, that's the thing. With Eddie Wineland, he, with the threat of the takedown, he commits to defense a lot more. So, with that said, I got to go with Frankie Signs to win this one. Um, just on pushing forward more, being able to mix in his stand up with his wrestling a bit more. Um, Frankie Signs is not much of a finisher, but uh, I'll go Frankie Signs by decision. Next fight after that, Darren the Damage Elkins fights Godofredo Pepe Castro. Elkins, 20 and 5 record, 5 wins by KO Tico, 5 wins by Sub. That's has 2 losses by KO Tico, 32 years old. He's 5'10 on a 2 fight win streak. Trains out of Doonland Valley Tudo. He is a grinder. I mean, this is a guy that will grind you up against a cage, his opponent up against a cage, or he'll take you down and just unleash this stay busy ground and pound that looks like hell for his opponent. He's a good wrestler with real strong top control. His striking is pretty bad. It's just awkward. He has awkward footwork, awkward striking mechanics, but he kind of just strikes to clinch. He is big and tough, though. Uh... Godofredo Castro, 12 and 3 record, 4 wins by KO Tico, 7 wins by Sub, he also has 2 losses by KO Tico. Both of those were actually by ground and pound uh, in, within his guard. Um, Pepe is 29 years old, he's 5'7 on a 3 fight win streak. Um, and he trains out of Evolu Kaltai with the likes of uh, Masha and Duba, among others. He last fought in March of 2015. I want to say that was against. Andre Touchy Feely, where he like triangled the guy. Here's the thing with Pepe. High risk, you know, kill or be killed type of fighter. You know, um, he's a guy that'll go for a um, flying triangle, which he beat Andre Feely with. He flying knee, which he beat with Noad Lahat with. Um, He's real wild with a stand-up. I mean, he'll throw the flying knees. He'll wing punches. Um, his takedown defense kind of sucks because he looks like he is so content off of his back. He has a really good triangle choke. Really strong Brazilian dude. He just goes overall. Um, but he is just... He's not... <coughs> he's just kind of a wild man. A very reckless guy. Um... This should be interesting because I think Elkins should be able to take down Pepe quite easily. 
I think now, if you remember the Charles Oliveira versus Damon Elkins fight, Elkins took him down, and in the transition, once he took him down, um, Oliveira slapped in the triangle, I think it was a triangle choke to an armbar or something like that. Um, but <laughs> that's when he got the submission. I kind of wonder if Pepe can. I can actually see Pepe doing that same thing, catching him in transition. Maybe in the scramble, possibly. Um, nonetheless, Elkins is something of that top, like that gatekeeper to the top 10. Uh, I don't think Pepe is that guy that beats, you know, is in the top 10 that can really beat Darren Elkins. Darren Elkins plays this game, grind, grind, grind. If he gets a ride position, he's going to beat you up. If he gets, he usually gets like top half guard and beats you up. Um, and that's just kind of what he does. He makes fights real ugly and very unpleasant for his opponent. He's not a potent finisher. Sometimes he doesn't seem to try to finish opponents. He just seems to want to break their will. Um, and Castro seems a little too inviting of that takedown. So I got to go with Darren Elkins to win by decision. Next fight after that, uh, Kamaru. He has like two nicknames, Marty or the Nigerian Nightmare Usman. He fights Alexander, the Thunder of the North, Yakovlev. Uh, Yakovlev, 23-6 and six record with one draw. Nine wins by K.O. Tico, eight wins by Sub. Also three losses by submission. Uh, 31 years old, he's 6-1 on a two-fight win streak. Um, trains out of K-Dojo Warrior Tribe. And uh, he... You know, he actually showed some pretty good stand-up and wrestling in his last fight. Um, you know, he, he has a, you know, he actually knocked out uh, George Sullivan in his last time out. And actually looked pretty good, beat uh, Gray Maynard in his last fight before that. Um, so yeah, he can kind of do every, a little bit of everything. He can wrestle pretty well. And he can strike pretty well. Uh, Kamaru Usman, 7-1 and one record. 5 wins by K or TKO. 1 win by submission. 28 years old. He's 6 foot on a 6 fight win streak. Training at the Black Zillions. And he is an ultimate fighter winner. Um, he's a strong wrestler. And just a really strong guy too. Good ground and pound. Um, his stand-up is improving as well. Um, actually, when he fought, um, what's that guy's name? Jeez, who did he fight last? He looked good because what happened is he was getting his wrestling game going. And then once his wrestling game was going, then he was able to strike. And like I said, his striking actually looks pretty good. Um... With that said, I got to go with Kamaru Usman to win this one. It's, you know, Yekulov's a good wrestler, but Usman is so stupid strong. Um, he, if he can like get Yekulov up against the cage, he can probably get the takedown. And, you know, just mixing his strikes with his wrestling. Um, I'm not going to call it finish here. Uh, maybe I should. You know, I'll go Kamara Usman by decision, but a finish is possible. Next fight that, JC Cattrall fights Miguel Trator Prezeris. Uh, Prezeris, 19 and 2 record, 1 win by TKO, 8 wins by sub, 32 years old, he's 5'6", and he is a grinder. Strong guy, good offensive takedown ability, with really weak stand-up. But once he's on top, he's really good at staying on top, and he can even pass guard to dominant positions as well. Um, and he's fighting JC Cottrell, who has a 17 and 3 record. Uh, two wins by K.O. Tico, 11 wins by Sub. He also has two losses by K.O. Tico. 26 years old, he's 5'10 on a six-fight win streak. It's his first fight in the UFC. So I saw his last fight, actually. Um, I forgot the opponent's name. It was on Legacy, if I'm not mistaken. 
His stand-up was kind of average. One thing I didn't like is it was kind of... It was actually kind of sloppy. Like, he was able to hit his opponent good with a left hook. You know? Um, but he really, like... Like, he had a really looping left hook. Uh, first of all. And he kind of rushed into strike. His wrestling, though, and his Brazilian disc skills are solid. So, Treto Prezeris is pretty much that test for prospects. At lightweight, they have a whole bunch of, like, hulking Brazilian fighters. <laughs> Um, Gleison Tivo, Leonardo Santos, Leandro Silva, Masa Duba, um, and Prezeris is kind of in that, like, they, all these guys are capable of being grinders, <laughs> um, that are just hard to deal with, and yeah, I thought, you know, I, I like Mikel Prezeris here to win this, just to grind his way into victory, you know, um, unless Cattrall can defend his takedowns. I and mean, the guys who beat Prezeris were like, what, Paulo Tiago on Walter Waite, and then like Kevin Lee, who's like an ultra good prospect and a really good wrestler. So uh, if Cattrall can defend the takedowns and beat him up on the feet, then I think Cattrall can win. The problem is, I haven't really seen Cattrall stand up to be that great. <laughs> you know, it's probably maybe just as good as Mikel Prezeris is, maybe. Uh, so yeah, Mikel Prezeris by decision. Uh, next fight after that, and this is on the fight pass prelims, we have James Moonwalker Muntazri fighting Alex Cowboy Oliveira. Uh, Muntazri, 9-3 record, 4 wins by Kehurtiko, 3 wins by Sub, 28 years old, he's 5'10", training at a black house, and he's trading wins and losses. He has a karate, is it like karate, taekwondo, like the traditional martial arts style, uh, karate style stand-up. Really good kicks, but he's also real unorthodox too. He'll go for a lot of spinning strikes. And I believe he won his last fight with a spinning strike. Uh, he's actually pretty heavy handed. He knocked out uh, Jordan Rinaldi just with his hands. And I'll say this with guys with that traditional uh, martial arts background uh, Stephen Thompson, Kung Lee, Machida, they're very accurate. And Mintazri is like pretty accurate with his strikes. And his takedown defense is actually pretty good. It's not. Like, you know, wrestlers like Kevin Lee are going to be able to take him down. But some of the lesser wrestlers, like a Fister or, like, um, opponents like that. Like, Alan, like Joe Allenberger had a really hard time taking him down. Uh, Muntantri, though, does have some cardio issues. Kind of wonder if that's going to be... Like, he's been fighting at 170 now. I think that might fix his cardio issues. Uh, Alex Cowboy Oliveira, 13 and 4 record with one draw and one no contest. Nine wins by KO Tico, two wins by sub. He also has three losses by submission. 28 years old, he's 5'11, training out of Tata Fight Team. And I want to even say uh, ATT as well. Um, he has some good stand up and some real heavy hands. I remember he knocked out Piotr Hallman with, that, with one punch. Um, one thing is he gets into brawler mode pretty quick. I mean, where he just starts winging punches. He's a strong guy. His wrestling is improving both offensively and defensively. His takedowns are more strength than technique. And his overall grappling is pretty good, too. He does have a, um, a knack for taking the back. Again, that rear naked choke. Um, with that said, though... This one's hard for me to call because uh, they're both kind of like action fighters. Um, I think Muntazri is more of an accurate striker. Whereas Olivia, he, he can end a fight at any time, you know, with, with his power. But um, he's a little too wild for my taste, you know, like... Um, and, like, he... He's showing a propensity to want to wrestle a lot more, but like I said, it's more strength than technique. And I think Muntazri might be able to actually defend Olivier's uh, style takedown. Um, and like I said, I like Muntazri's accuracy. His problem is really cardio. Um, he doesn't, like, you know, he, he can get out grappled a bit, but um, I don't know if Alex Olivier is the type to do that. So, yeah, I'm going to go James Mutazri to win this one. Uh, he's a just accurate striker. He might be able to um, 
hit him with a spinning back fist or spinning back kick or something like that. He's a little more unorthodox. Um, so yeah, I like James and Tosby to win this. Tough to say if there's a finish or not. Um, uh, I mean, Muntazri can sub guys, but he's mainly a striker, and Olivier is a tough guy. I go Muntazri by decision. Next fight is that George Sullivan fights Hector Urbina. Uh, Sullivan, 17 and 5 record with one no contest, 11 wins by KO Tico, six wins by decision. He also has three losses by sub. 35 years old, he's six foot and trading losses and wins. Was recently getting knocked out by Alexander Yakolev. Um, George Sullivan at welterweight is what I like to call like the blue collar fighter. There's a couple of them in welterweight. They're these gatekeeper types that are like good everywhere, tough, resilient, but not particularly great at one aspect of MMA. Save for like a like Ryan LaFleur is kind of like that, but he, you know, Ryan LaFleur is actually a really good wrestler. But then there's like Kenny Robertson, um, Court McGee, um, George Sullivan's in there. Who else? There's there's a couple more like that. Um, but Robertson has some solid stand-up. You know, he, 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 you know, it's nothing great, but nothing bad. He's a good wrestler, and his ground and pound is actually pretty good. Hector El Toro Urbina, 17 and 9 record with one draw, nine wins by K or Tico, five wins by sub. He also has five losses by K or Tico and two losses by sub. 20 years old, he's six foot. Um, nothing particular standout-ish with Urbina. His stand-ups average, his overall grappling games average. He's not di particularly difficult to take down. He does have a good guillotine. Um, he's tough. But that's relatively tough. But that's that's about it. Um, so with that said, yeah, I gotta go George Sullivan to win this one. He, he might even be better at just most aspects of MMA than Urbina. You just pick him apart, wear him down. Uh, maybe even get a KO or TKO victory, like ground and pound or something like that. So uh, George Sullivan, KO or TKO. Next fight of that, Jim the Beast Aylers fights Jason the Kid Knight. Ehlers, 13 and 2 record with one no contest, two wins by KO Tico, nine wins by sub. That's just two losses by KO Tico. 29 years old, he's 5'9, trains out of MMA Masters. Uh, Ehlers' strength, I'd say, is primarily in grappling. His wrestling and Brazilian Jiu skills are pretty solid. His stand ups, like his boxing, it's average offensively, but it's weak defensively. He's a guy that tends to get hit and hit hit clean quite often. Like Alan Omer was able to, to, to hurt him pretty bad. Um, Chas Kelly knocked him out, you know. Um, I thought that Cole Miller was actually picking them apart quite well too. But Jason the Kid Knight, 13 and 2 record, two wins by Karatiko, nine wins by sub. Similar actually. Actually very they're both very similar record wise. Even the win the wins, thirteen wins and two losses are the same. Knight is 24 and he's 5'11. He's a good wrestler with really average stand up. His Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skills are solid, but the problem with Knight is that he likes to work off his back far too much. Um, and I don't know if that's really good in the UFC. It's that one weakness that I gotta pick Jim Ehlers. I, Jim Ehlers has been kind of up and down with me. Um, and he does have some liability standing, but Knight's not great standing himself, you know? So, and he's a bit too content off of his back. So I gotta go Jim Ehlers to win this. I'll go by decision. And finally, Luis K.O.B. Enrique fights Dmitry Smolyakov. Smolyakov, 8-0, undefeated record, 4 wins by K.O. Tico, 4 wins by sub, 33 years old, he's 6-2 and a finisher. Never ever past the first round. Um, it's his first fight in the UFC. He does have a Greco-Roman background. I only saw one fight of his where he beat up some dude in like 18 seconds. But he actually showed some pretty good boxing and some particularly fast hands. Um, he doesn't move very well though. You know, he like moves like a heavyweight. Uh, Luis Enrique, 8-2 record, one win, 
and one no contest, three wins by KO Tiko, two wins by Sub. That's just two losses by KO Tiko, 22 years old, 6'3. And he's actually a pretty good wrestler and overall good, good grappler. And his stand up, I'd say it's just average, you know. Uh, with that said, this one's actually hard for me to call because one, it's heavyweight, two, Smolyakov's never been past the first round, so he's unreliable in that sense and hasn't exactly fought the best level of competition. Um, Enrique's level of competition, I mean, he, he lost to Francis Ngannou, but for the most part, it hasn't been that great either. So, um, nonetheless, I'll go with Dimitri Smolyakov to win this one. I guess I'll by like KO or Tiko. Not super confident in this pick, though. Um, and to recap, okay. So, in the main event of Holly Holm beating uh, Valentina Shevchenko by decision. Uh, Edson Barboza beating Gilbert Melendez by decision. Francis Ngannou over Bojan Mihaljevic by K.O. TKO. Felice Herrig over Kylan Curran by decision. On the prelims on Fox, have Frankie Sines over Eddie Wineland by decision. Darren Elkins over Godofredo Castro by decision. Kamara Usman beating Alexander Yakovlev by, I think it's by decision. And Miguel Prezeris beating JC Cottrell by decision. On the prelims, I have James Ntazri over Alex Oliveira by, I think it's by decision. George Sullivan over Hector Urbino by KO Tico. Jim Ehlers over Jason Knight by decision. And Dmitry Smolyakov by beating Louise Enrique by KO or TKO. So that's pretty much it for my predictions for UFC on Fox 20, home versus Shevchenko. If you have any comments, just leave them below. And please support me and my journey of being an author by buying some of my works, starting with uh, my first novel, an action adventure fantasy called The Mustard Prince in the Covenant Kingdom for $4.99 on PDF at www.chrismodon.com or if you have an e-reader you can buy it for $4.99 on Amazon.com. You can also buy just for $1.99 some of my short stories starting with The Land of the Wooden Statues. Uh, my horror collection, or my fantasy fable collection. So, uh, that's pretty much it for my predictions for UFC on Fox 20. Um, and that's it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.